Hey, good evening and welcome. Let's stand together tonight as we begin a song. Lord, reign in me. Over all the earth, you reign on high. Every mountain stream and every sunset sky. But my one request, Lord, my only aim is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me. Reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? Over every thought and over every word, may my life reflect the beauty of my Lord. You mean more to me than any earthly thing. So won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams and my darkest hour. You are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams and my darkest hour. You are the Lord. So won't you reign in me again? So won't you reign in me again? I will give thanks to thee, O Lord, among the people, and I will sing praises to thee among the nations for thy steadfast love is great is great to the heavens and thy faithfulness thy faithfulness to the clouds and be exalted Give thanks to Thee, O Lord, among the people, and I will sing praises to Thee among the nations. For Thy steadfast love is great, is great to the heavens, and Thy faithfulness Thy faithfulness to the clouds be exalted, O oh God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be over all the earth. Be exalted, O oh God, above the heavens. Thy glory be over all the earth. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jody, and all of our singers and musicians tonight. Welcome back to Bible Baptist. It is Mother's Day evening, and we are thankful that you have joined us here at Bible Baptist. Hope you had a wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day afternoon and uh, with family and friends, and it's so good to see some guests and new folks here with us tonight as well. I know it's a, a smaller crowd on a holiday evening like that, but uh, we are grateful that you have come to join us and be a part of the service. You're in for a special treat. We've got a very special song. One of our young ladies and her mom's going to sing here in honor of Mother's Day in just a few minutes. But we want to welcome you and thank you for being here uh, today. And um, we don't have all the numbers in, all the visitor cards, all the things, but it appears that we were just one family shy 
of hitting 500 today in worship, which would be the best we've had since COVID. So four little Baptists, you know who you are. If you're watching online right now, okay, uh, we're coming for you, all right? We know, we know where you are. But uh, praise the Lord, we're seeing new folks every week, and it's just a great spirit in the services, and we're thankful for God's blessings on our church family. Amen? Amen. Let's get started with prayer tonight, and we'll share some uh, announcements and things with you here a little bit later in the service. Uh, but please remember those uh, families that are traveling and uh, our graduates and uh, all of the uh, vacations and things that are ramping up now, be in prayer for the Hausman family, and they'll be uh, packing their truck up tomorrow and heading to Ohio and dropping things off and coming back for a second trip, amen? But uh, you know, they had six sons born in Ohio in a row. I guess that's how it would be, wouldn't it? Six sons in a row. And then, once they got their hearts right and came to Georgia, God gave them a little girl. And she's a Georgia peach. And I think we ought to take a church vote. If it's made in Georgia, stays in Georgia. How do you say that? Amen? amen. All in favor, say amen. 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 So be it. Brad, leave her with us, okay? Uh, but all kidding aside, they'll be heading back. Tomorrow, coming back for the weekend, getting their last load of things, and we have a special farewell uh, fellowship next Sunday. And they're not really gone for, long, for good. I mean, we've got Brad lined up to help us with some projects he doesn't know about just yet, but uh, we've already got his air tickets com- confirmed, and we're going to miss them dearly. So you be sure in the next week or so to, to let them know how much you love and appreciate the Hausman family and the blessing they've been these uh, almost, almost four years since the Lord brought them our way. Well, let's get started with prayer tonight. Brother Michael Finley, would you come and pray for us, please? Let's pray. Father God, we come to you, Lord. We do thank you for this day and, Lord, the celebration of mothers and uh, women in our lives that have uh, just guided us, and we thank you for those. And Lord, thank you for uh, just the, the special women that they are in our lives. Lord, I pray now that you would be with this service tonight. Lord, and uh, I just pray that you would be with uh, uh, our pastor and his message. And Lord, we're thankful for uh, his boldness to speak your truth. And so, Lord, I pray tonight that you would be with uh, those that are visiting with us. Lord, we're so thankful that they came. And this morning, the great turnout that we had. And, and Lord, we do think of all the, the, the summer plans that are taking place with people ramping up their vacations and taking trips. And we pray for those safeties. Uh, Lord, we do think of the Hausman family, and we're very thankful for their service to our church uh, for this many years, and, and Lord, we just pray that you would uh, be with them this week as they travel, and Lord, as they pack up the truck tomorrow and head back to Ohio on Tuesday and then bring in, uh, coming back this weekend. Lord, pray that you'll keep them safe, and then as they get settled there in Ohio, we pray that you just give them the guide and direction they need. Lord, pray that you be with as well those that have lost loved ones, and we pray that you would uh, just give them the, the, the certain uh, peace and comfort that they need in this moment. Lord, pray that you'll be with us now, be with the music. Lord, again, just be with our, uh, our hearts to be open to your word. Lord, we love you, we thank you. your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's sing about God's grace tonight, amen? Grace greater than our sin. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our stain that we cannot hide. What can avail to wash it away? Look, there is flowing a crimson tide. Whiter than snow you may be today. infinite matchless grace freely bestowed on all who believe you that are longing to see his face will you this moment his grace receive 
receive grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within, grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my home, secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. When we been there ten thousand years, Bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to see God's praise than when we first begun. Amen. have Kara and Marie Mosier singing tonight, and uh, before they sing this song, it's a very special song because for the last year, uh, so many folks, of course, with uh, COVID have been wearing these masks and uh, trying to be safe and all of that, different settings and scenarios, but uh, this song talks about our smile. And during that time of uh, wearing those masks, that smile wasn't visible, and it really is a blessing to have someone smile, amen? And so uh, Kara had this special song, excuse me, Marie had this special song, and she asked her mom to sing it with her, and so I get to play the piano for them as they sing this special song. It's called the Smile Song, and it will make you smile, okay?
Amen. Thank you. She has a great, great smile. Well, being Mother's Day, I was thinking of a song. I have not sung this song in well over 10 years, and I've actually lost a few uh, ranges there, so I've had to lower it. But it's a special song by Squire Parsons. It talks about a phone call that a mama got one night from her son after many years of prayer. And so we're going to see if I can do this song. Hello, Mama is the name of the song. Hello, Mama. I just called to tell you all those prayers you prayed for me, they were not in vain. Something happened tonight while traveling down a country road. I thought you should be the first to know that I am not the same. All those dreary days, they're over now. Those sleepless nights are past. And all those prayers that you have prayed so long, they're answered now at last. Oh, I'm not the boy I used to be. Mama, you can sleep tonight. For I found Jesus. Now everything's all right. I remember every night before you'd go to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep that I would find the way. And I'm so thankful through all the loneliness and wasted years. Mama's prayers kept ringing in my ears every night and day. days, they're over now. Those sleepless nights are past, and all those prayers that you have prayed so long, they're answered now at last. Oh, I'm not the boy I used to be. Mama, you can sleep tonight, for I found Jesus. Now everything's all right. All those dreary days, they're over now. Those sleepless nights are past. And all those prayers that you have prayed so long, they're answered now at last. No, I'm not the boy I used to be. Mama, you can sleep tonight, for I found Jesus. Now everything's all right. No, I'm not the boy I used to be. Mama, you can sleep tonight. For I found Jesus, now everything's all right, it's all right. Amen. Amen. I know a lot of moms who are waiting for a phone call like that, and uh, maybe you were one of those before your child found the Lord. Well, in your Bibles tonight, Ecclesiastes chapter number 12, Ecclesiastes chapter number 12. Thank you, Marie and Kara, for that great song tonight, and she's been uh, wanting to get that song. We practiced a couple times, and uh, uh, she is ready to go. And if you know Marie, you know that smile uh, is her testimony in that song. Please stand with us as we read God's Word tonight, Ecclesiastes chapter number 12, very simple message tonight. It's been a 
busy weekend, a busy day for so many. And so as we close out this Mother's Day evening, just a simple uh, reminder from the Word of God, a message called, It's Easier Than You Think, Easier Than You Think. And so notice in chapter 12 of Ecclesiastes, verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's read verse 13 out loud. Can we go back, please? Verse 13, let's read that together. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, and please be seated. Easier than you think. You know, sometimes we make the Christian life seem so complicated, so overwhelming, so difficult that we can talk ourselves right into defeat. And trust me, it's not easy, I understand that, but we get it backwards sometimes in Christianity because we say it's so hard to be a Christian, and especially in this, uh, this wicked day and generation that we live in. I talked a little bit about that this morning, and it's so difficult to be a Christian. But stop and think for just a moment. The Bible doesn't say that. Uh, the Bible says, yes, in the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. The Bible does say, however, that the way of the transgressor is hard. Now think about your life for a minute, and I do not mean to uh, in any way um, limit the effects or the problems or minimize, I guess is the word I'd say. I don't mean to minimize in any way our, your trials or, or issues, but stop and consider with me. If you're saved, say amen. amen. Your worst day as a Christian is still better than a lost man's best day who's heading for hell for all eternity. Your worst day as a child of God, and it can be bad. It can be like Job. I mean, I, we talked about him this morning just a little bit, and, and the Bible gives an indication that those messengers came to Job like one after another, and another came and told him this bad news, and another came and told him this bad news, and another came. If I was Job, I'd have moved. Well, they couldn't. That was a joke, but not very good one, I guess. I would have. Uh, I'd have got out of there. They kept coming and bringing bad news. But what did he say? Blessed be the name. Of the Lord. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, and blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Amen. We do have some difficult times. There's no doubt about that. There's no sugarcoating that. The Lord does not exempt us, whether it be health crises or financial issues or family issues, or children issues. He doesn't exempt us from that. Christians have cancers. Christians have heart disease. Christians have, uh, lose loved ones. It, the sorrows of this world are, are manifest in all of humanity. But sometimes we do make the Christian life harder than it needs to be. And so a simple message, again, not to minimize problems, not to overlook, not to say suck it up buttercup, okay? but to understand that sometimes we make it so difficult when Solomon says, and he was the wisest man that lived according to the Word of God, he says, you know what, it can all boil down to this. It can boil down to this one truth. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. You don't have to figure it all out. You don't have to have every answer that we talked about this morning. Hannah didn't have an answer. It was unexplainable. You, you don't have to have everything in order all the time because God is in control. Remember, and we're not many times. He is in control of all things. And Solomon boils it down and says, he clears away the dust. He makes it very plain. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's the duty of man. And if you and I can put ourselves in that lane, if we can get free enough from the distractions of the world, not ignore them, but not be overcome of them, as Jesus said, be not overcome. Paul said, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. If we can stay in that lane, fear God and keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. Fear God 
and keep his commandments. And just chugging away, just every day, step after step, day after day, just keep that focus, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, fearing God and keeping his commandments. Listen, we should not be discouraged that we can't do everything. I am, um, and the staff can concur with this, um, Bible Baptist Church is a trap to the preacher. It's a trap. You ever seen those Venus fly traps and they get that bug and then they just like crunch you down? You say, where are you going with this? Well, I'll explain. Just give me a minute. There is so much to do in this ministry and on this campus that if I don't stay away from this campus for a 24-hour period, which rarely happens, rarely happens, I just get sucked into all that needs to be done because from the facilities to the grounds to the planning, uh, I, I, the guys can tell you I've got a, a map on my wall over in the office. Uh, Jay, probably two years I've been planning to finish that thing. What we're trying to do is we're dividing up deacon districts so we can uh, list all the families that live in those particular districts so that the deacon family can help us share some of the burden and responsibility and care and ministry of, of those particular families in geographic areas and trying to make things easier. And, and so administratively, there is so much to do. Uh, physically in this plant, there is so much to do. It's a big property. There's a lot of buildings. There's a lot of needs. And, and it's, uh, it's that whack-a-mole. You get one thing fixed and something else breaks. You all know what I'm trying to talk about? You had a car like that, didn't you? <laughs> you get this thing fixed and then you got to find something else. And, and there's no shortage. And, and, and life is that way. It's the, the church here, the, this property is an analogy of that. This ministry is an analogy of life. There's always something more to be done. There's never, I, I have, uh, I read the sign that said, I believe God only gives us so many things to be done in our lifetime. And then it says, right now I'm so far behind I'll never die. Y'all feel like that sometimes? God has given us so many things to do, but I have to come to the realization and I'm, I'm getting there. It's taken me a while. I'm a hard learner. But we cannot do everything. We cannot do everything, and uh, though we must be diligent about what we can do, and we must strive for excellence, and we must uh, uh, not be slothful in our business, but think with me, don't be discouraged that you can't do everything, but be excited that you can do something, and that what you can do, we ought to do. Fear God and keep His commandments. That's something I can do. Amen. And it's something you can do. Fear God and keep his commandments. Compare that phrase of Solomon with the first and greatest commandment. You know what it is? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul and thy mind. It's pretty similar, isn't it? Fear God and keep his commandments. Then you have John 14, 15, Jesus' own words. If you love me, keep my commandments. Didn't he kind of boil it all down also? Kind of like Solomon did. He, he's making it easier than what we make it out to be sometimes. So Christian, I know you've got a lot on your plate. I know you've got a lot on your plate. I, I don't even have a plate. I have a cafeteria tray. Or two. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of mental work. There's a lot of spiritual work. There's a lot of physical work in ministry. There's a lot going on. You bear the burdens. Paul talked about the care uh, besides all of these things, he said the care of all the churches that he had to carry on his shoulders. There's a lot. But it boils down to this, and this is the truth I want to get across tonight. It's easier than we think if we'll just simply fear God and keep his commandments. So what is it, what are some things, let's say it that way, that every Christian, every child of God, uh, no matter their status, no matter their age, no matter their time of salvation, what is some things that every Christian can do along this line of fearing God and keeping his commandments? And because it's easier than you think, we're going to start everyone with the letter E. It's kind of like Jeopardy. But you're not getting any money. Stay with me. Here we go. It's easier than you think. Number one, every child of God, no matter your status, every one of us can elevate our service to the Lord. What do you mean by that? I mean there's room for improvement in every one of our lives when it comes to our spiritual walk with God, our personal walk 
with God. We can all elevate our service to the Lord. We can fear God and keep his commandments about his word. We can elevate our Bible reading. Our Bible reading can become more important to us than it currently is. We can add more to our Bible reading than what we currently do. How about prayer? We talked about that prayer uh, element today with Hannah and how she, how she partnered with Eli in her request. We can have prayer partners. We can have prayer lists. We can have prayer journals. We can elevate. Prayer is a ministry. You understand that? Pr prayer is hard work. Uh, the fervent, effectual fervent prayer. When, when you have prayer warriors in your church, when you have prayer warriors in your circle of friends uh, that, that dedicate time every day. Um, I forget, my wife and I are visiting with someone, and, and the, the song came to me um, about somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They got down on their knees and prayed for me. They had no doubt that God could bring me out. I'm so glad that someone prayed for me. And you know, Christian, the truth is people are praying for you all the time. You don't even know it. You don't even know it. Our Sunday school class has been talking about sharing the message of, of the gospel and how that we need to uh, prepare the way for that with prayer. Praying for people. Hey, they can reject your, your presentation of the gospel, but they cannot resist your prayers. Amen? They have no ability. They can tell you, stop praying for me, but you don't have to. Right? They may say, don't, don't show me any Bible verses, and that and you they may stop you from doing that. They, they may take your invitation to church and throw it, throw it away. We had a lady today. Um, I won't say her name. It was very kind of funny. It was a little humorous. Um, she sold a house recently, and the people she sold the house to showed up to church today. Now, th this has been a couple months ago since they moved in the house. And she was surprised to see him and said, what are you doing here? And they said, you invited us here. She said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what? They might throw your invitation away but they can't throw your prayers away. And so you pray with them. It's, it's uh, spiritual warfare. We're wrestling not against flesh and blood, amen, but spiritual wickedness in high places. There's a prayer warriors. Every church needs them. Every family needs them. Prayer is ministry. We can elevate prayer in our life. The average Christian prays less than 90 seconds a day, and usually that's for their food. That's, that's not good. Fear God and keep his commandments. We can elevate our prayer life. We can elevate church attendance. Now, I was just talking to Michael here during that, that last song. You, you all are a blessing to me. The, the fact you're, I know it's a holiday, I guess, technically, a Mother's Day holiday. I get that. I know it's beautiful. I know we're surrounded by water, amen, and beaches, and, and I know there's a, 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 listen, out in the cornfields of Ohio, there wasn't a whole lot to do except count cornrows. But here, there's all kinds of stuff to do, right? But you're in the Lord's house tonight, and that's a blessing to me. I appreciate that. I really do. But here's the point. Why is it that if somebody works out four times a week, we admire that? But somebody goes to church a couple times a week, we think they're a nut. Hello, my family growing up, my family growing up was Catholic and they equated church attendance with how bad you have been. True story. So what would happen is, you know, you would do whatever you did during the week and then you'd go to church and try to make it right and then you'd start over again. And you know, any former Catholics out there, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So when my family got saved and we started going to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, my family said to us, what are y'all doing? Uh, what are you doing that's so bad that you have to go to church three times a week? It just blew them away. They thought we were just, you know, devil worshipers or something that we had to go to church three times a week. Why is that? And I'm not against working out three times a week. I'm not against having golf or, or baseball or whatever. But listen, we can elevate our service to the Lord as well. We can elevate our service to the Lord as well. I had a guy who was trying to teach me golf. I'm terrible at golf. I go once a year. And you're not going to get any good if you go once a year. And I have resigned myself to the fact that I'm not going to be any good. But he told me in love, he said, Preacher, why don't you spend your time and money at the driving range? Don't go out here and play golf. Just go hit a bucket of balls every day for a while 
and, and that, that will help you. And I thought, you know what? I wish I had the time to go hit a bucket of balls every day. I, I, I've got things to do, man. I've got work to do. But they didn't think anything about it. Didn't think anything about working out every day, then taking their shower, then going to work. Uh, didn't think anything about, you know, getting out of work and going to the club and doing their fitness routine. Didn't think anything about it. But man, if you ask some people to come to church more than once a week, you're like, you just ask them to, to sacrifice a child or something. Now, come on. You all with me? It's a light crowd, so you got to amen twice as much. Amen. Help me out here. Why is it? Why is it that way? This is that we relegate spirit. No, because Solomon said the goal is fear God and keep his commandments. And, and that's just one example. That, that's not the main point, but uh, we can all elevate our service to the Lord. I, I, I'm telling you right now, I could read my Bible more than I read my Bible. I could pray more than I pray. I could be in church more. Think with me. What about giving? Tithing is a big th deal for people. And, and uh, I hope that you have reached a place of spiritual trust and honesty with God, that that is part of your habit, that is part of your Christian service. But what about the next mile? What about the next thing? What about missions? What about the building fund? What about love offerings? Are you able to elevate all of that? Can you participate more than what you've done in the past? Think with me about that. We can all, it's easier than we think. It's easier than we think. I know it doesn't look like it, but I've been trying to avoid fast food as much as, uh, more than I used to. Amen? Um, are you amen in the doesn't look like it part or, the, or that it's a good idea part? Okay, let's get the timing there. But you understand something? Uh, I can remember, Brother Butch, you can remember this too probably. I can remember taking my boys to McDonald's and all of our family, family of four, eating McDonald's for like 10 or 12 dollars. Now my son goes to Subway, and the sandwich is $10. Don't get me started. What I'm saying is, you quit eating out so much, all of a sudden, here's another 20 bucks, here's another 40 bucks that you used to just be buying food that you didn't need. That could go to missions. Amen? That could go to whatever. I'm just saying that it's not as hard as we make it out to be. It's really not as hard as we make it out to be. We can all elevate our service. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Number two, we can all be an example, letter E, we can all be an example to others. I shared this recently, but you may, uh, sometimes we forget this. You're being watched constantly by the world, and you're being watched constantly by other believers. And when we realize that people are watching us, and I'm not just talking about putting on a front, I'm talking about the real deal. I'm talking about people knowing that you are genuine. Um, this week's Sunday School was about sharing the message. Next week is about living the message. People are watching you more than for a superficial uh, uh, presentation. You with me? They, they want to see and need to see real Christianity demonstrated. And so unbelievers are watching us. Look at 1 Timothy 4, 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, that means lifestyle or manner of living, in charity, that is love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Be an example of the believers. Be an example. Paul told that young preacher, you've got to understand people are watching you, and what kind of example are you setting? In your words, in your living, in your giving spirit, in your faith, in your purity or uh, holiness, what are you showing the world? And then other believers are watching you as well. Other believers are watching you. They are paying attention. And uh, you say, well, that's not, you know, they shouldn't be doing that. Well, why not? If I'm fearing God and keeping his commandments, why wouldn't I want somebody to see that? Because I may be a help to someone who's struggling. If I'm fearing God and keeping his commandments, it's okay for people to watch me. Amen? Paul said, be ye followers of me as I am also of Christ. He wanted people to follow him. He wanted people to see his example. 
And so if we are doing what we're supposed to be doing, then certainly we can be an example. It's not as hard as we make it. And little ones are watching us. Little ones are watching us. Uh, older ones are watching us. Believers. I, I'm telling you, uh, preachers, uh, we, we even have more eyes on us, I think, um, than, than, than just uh, uh, Christians in general. Uh, because people are, are watching. I've shared this story before. I don't know if I've shared it here, but uh, early on in our church there in Ohio, I was going through the bank drive through You know why banks have drive throughs So cars can meet their real owners. Amen. Come on, it's Mother's Day. Give a guy a break. <laughs> Gabe, I keep pitching them, and they just keep missing them. You know what I'm saying? So I go through the drive through and uh, got some change back, and I don't know, maybe there's supposed to be three 20s or four, I don't remember... But there was, it's the ones that were they're really new, and they were like stuck. And so the lady gave me, let's just say she gave me four, and I was only supposed to have three. And so I started to drive away, and I thought, I better check this. And I checked it, thinking maybe she didn't give me enough. When I found out she gave me too many. And so there was nobody coming, so I backed up and pushed that button, and she came out, and... And I said, ma'am, I'm sorry, but you, you gave me one too many, and uh, so uh, I want to get this back to you. And she's like, oh, she said, thank you so much. She said, you know, some people wouldn't do that. And I said, I'm not about, <laughs> I'm not about to blow my testimony as a pastor and ruin the testimony of my new church in this town for 20 bucks. Amen? Amen. Not about to steal 20 bucks from the bank. Because they're already watching you to see how you're going to handle things. Now, I don't believe it was a setup. Could have been. But you see what I'm trying to say? People are watching us all the time. How do we respond? How do we handle things? How, how, how do we approach life? Believers are watching, and we can all be an example. Even these young people are examples. That's why I love having our young people in the choir, in the orchestra. It's an example to the kids to say, hey, we can serve the Lord. We don't have to wait till we're adults to serve the Lord. Amen? Amen? And then adults, we need to be serving the Lord. So these kids see us serving the Lord, and they know that's what we do. We fear God, and we keep His commandments. That's the whole duty of man. We can all be examples to others. Number three, we can all be an encouragement. Letter E, it's easier. See, I spent a lot of time putting that together easier. We can all be an encouragement to others. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another. I could have used that word. Even as also ye do. Paul's commending this church. He said, you guys have a good reputation of comforting yourselves and edifying or to build up. To build up. It's where we get the same uh, root word for edifice or structure or building so to encourage one another, we can do that. Um, it's not as hard as we make it out to be. Uh, I am often encouraged when folks send notes or cards or, or say something about uh, the message and, and, uh, or the church, whatever project we're working on. And it's a, it's, it's a blessing to have encouragement. Amen? It's a blessing for people to uh, notice what you're doing, to try to build you up. And it's not as hard as you uh, make it to, to be. Um, a, simple, a simple word of encouragement um, is pleasant to the soul. Uh, it could be a phone call or a text. It could be a card. Uh, just, hey, appreciate the effort and, and thank you for your ministry or thank you for what you did in this situation. And, you know, as I said earlier, hundreds of people encourage me uh, every week by just being here. That's an encouragement. If you've ever tried to preach to an empty auditorium, and I did it for several months during covid and it was, it was good to have people in the seats. And, you know, hundreds of people, they don't call, they don't send letters, they don't send notes, they don't email the preacher uh, every week. I, I, don't even, I don't even verbally communicate with a lot of them. But you know what? Just the fact that they're serving the Lord, they're in their seats, they brought their family, they're here to worship, they're here to, to praise the Lord, that's an encouragement. That's a blessing. And you don't know the blessing you are to the people around you. Just being who you are and where you are. You know, people are hurting. I said last week, had a couple comments about it. 
In every pew in every church in America, there's a broken heart. In every pew in every church in America, there's a broken heart. And so we don't, un- we don't know sometimes. I, I, I've had people over the years who, and uh, they weren't trying to insult me in any way, at least I don't think so. Sometimes I'm too uh, ignorant to know I'm being insulted. But they um, uh, said, preacher, um, you know, it wasn't the message that really spoke to me today. It was the song. God used that song to really speak to me. Or it wasn't the message, or it wasn't the song. It was somebody, so-and-so came up and, and gave me a hug and said, hey, we're glad to see you, and we've been praying for you. And then they got more out of that. that. That's why church can never be replaced by a computer. Amen? And no offense if you're watching online, we're glad you joined us. But you know what? Being in the house of God, being with God's people, just for those types of minutes, those types of instances, to, to see people praying at the altar, to have someone come and pray with you at the altar, to, 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 to share the joys of life but also the burdens of life, we can all be an encouragement to others. Fear God and keep His commandments. And, and Jesus, one of His commandments is to love one another, amen, and, and to, to, to be uh, in that relationship of brothers and sisters in Christ and, and uh, love one another as I have loved you. And so these are following his commandments. People are hurting emotionally. Uh, People are hurting physically. Uh, People are lonely. Isn't that amazing? Do you know you can be alone in a room of a thousand people? You can be alone on the inside. And uh, I I do not like to be alone. My wife knows that very well. Um, if, If I'm if I'm home alone, very now she likes she likes it. She you know. Uh, I saw a sign one time, it says, we child-proofed our house, but they keep getting in. I said, we can all be an encouragement. That's what I said, okay? She likes her alone time. She needs that alone time, and I don't do a good enough job giving her that alone time because I don't like to be alone. Amen? So if I'm not... If I have to be alone, I'll find somebody to go talk to. I'll find somebody to visit. I'll find somebody to do something. You know, I'll have a conversation with the lady at the drive-thru just to talk to somebody. I don't like to be alone. So it's odd for me to understand that. But there are people who, it doesn't matter how many people physically are around them, they, they're alone. They're alone. And people are hurting and they need encouragement. And who knows, you may just be the blessing that somebody needs. You may be the example. You may, you may be that touch in their life. You, you may be that smile that Marie sang about that, that just lets them know, hey, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right, amen? No matter what you're facing, it's going to be all right. God is in control. And he is the mender of broken wings and the healer of broken hearts. And so simple words, a, a call, uh, a card, um, that's a ministry. We had uh, Miss Tanner. Remember Nell Tanner? What a ministry she had in sending cards and notes. And we had ladies like that in our church before and just would send, a, just, I mean, just brighten your day, uh, just, ex, just make you feel loved and, and uh, cared for. Just a note, just a card. We can all be an encouragement to others. And then number four, we can all be an educator. Look at Psalm 66, verse 16. David said, come and hear all you that fear God. What does Solomon say? Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So David picks up and says, come and hear all you that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. We can be an educator. We can be a testifier. We can be a testimony of the goodness of God. Uh, There's a song out now, and I don't know how old it is. I just heard it. I'm always the last to hear anything. But it says, all my life he has been faithful. And all my life he's been so, so good. And with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. That's my testimony. Amen, Aaron? I know it's your testimony. All your life he's been faithful. And all your life he's been so good. And with every breath, that's what David's saying, with every breath that I'm able, I will sing of the goodness of God. We can all be an educator. We can tell people what he has done. Jesus said to the maniac of Gadara, go home and tell thy friends what great things God has done for you. We can tell others about the Lord. 
Tell them about his love. Tell them about his promises. Tell them about his presence. Tell them about prayers that he has answered in your life. Go and tell somebody what he's done for you. We can be an educator. This morning's lesson in in life groups, how shall they hear without a preacher? And that word preacher does not, as we learned today, does not mean pastor or missionary or evangelist. That means a proclaimer, someone to tell the story. That's a wonderful thing, and I'm just not trying to recap Sunday school, but man, I got a blessing out of Sunday school today. For all have sinned, that's the bad news, but all can be saved, that's the good news. But to be saved, they've got to hear it. And how shall they call? Whosoever, stay with me, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how shall they call on him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And so we must educate, as David said, Come, all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. We can all do that. It's not hard as we make it out to be. I hope you're seeing the pattern here. These are simple things that every one of us, every child of God, can learn from Solomon's instructions. And then finally tonight, we can all enlist others. We can all enlist others. I shared a couple weeks ago about our plan of, of investing and involving and inviting And this follows that same theme. We can all enlist others by inviting folks to hear the gospel, by inviting folks to church, just as I shared the lady today, the family came. Um, Again, 25% of unchurched adults would come if just somebody asked them to come. All they had to do is ask them. I know... uh, Gabe, I don't need to pick on him, but he invited a friend just a few weeks ago, and that friend's been every Sunday since. Isn't that something? Jimmy Stokes invited a couple. They came last Sunday. They came back this Sunday. He said, we need to talk about joining the church. Shazam. Somebody just asked him. Just invited him. And now these families are coming. Faithful. It's, it's, it's awesome when you have visitors inviting visitors. It's awesome when you have new people bringing new people. But what about the rest of us? We can't be lax in that because that's one of fear God and keep His commandments. Go and tell somebody. Bring them in. Compel them to come in that my house may be filled We can all enlist others, inviting them, list of prospects. I stopped by a a house I've been watching, and uh, uh, when I see people, new people move in different places, and you know, you get used to seeing uh, houses that are empty, and then all of a sudden, uh, there's somebody new living there, and so a, a law enforcement officer in a neighboring jurisdiction, I've seen his police car there a couple times, and I thought, you know what, our cops are in a bad situation in our country, and uh, we we support uh, the the, uh, uh, the good law enforcement. We support police officers and the job that they have to do, and we certainly call out anything that needs to be called out. But that doesn't mean we we are against uh, uh, the institution of police. And so I saw that vehicle, and I thought I'm going to stop there. And sometimes I would see the police car there, and sometimes I'd see the personal car there, and I rarely saw both of them together. But I saw them together. And so I stopped and I introduced myself, young couple, just been married a few years, have a four-year-old son. And stopped to invite him to church and uh, said, well, I work most Sundays right now, but um, we'd be glad to try it sometime. And, and uh, just n- not far from here, I, you could almost throw a football. Well, maybe not. Maybe two football fields, maybe three, but they're close. And, and uh, I said, listen, I'm Pastor McInerney. I'm also a chaplain for the Chatham County Police Department, and we are, we are strongly supportive of law enforcement, and uh, we know we, you guys are going through a lot right now nationally, and we just want you to know we're praying for you, and we support you guys, and we'd love to have you come some some. some. It, it wasn't hard. Do you see what I'm saying? You just, you just stop the car. You just get out. You just knock on the door. You just hand them an invitation. 
we make it harder than it needs to be. Oh, being a Christian is so hard. No, it's not. It's a joy. It's a blessing. We not only get all the blessings here, but then we're going to heaven on top of that. That ought to make a Baptist shout and a Methodist faint right there. We're going to live in heaven for all eternity, saved by the blood. We can all enlist others. And we need help in this ministry. We need help in the service of the Lord. Look at this last story, Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5 and verse 5. Do we have that, fellas, in the back? Luke 5 and verse 5? Maybe we don't. Well, in your lap there's a Bible. So let's go to Luke chapter 5, verse 5. I may have missed it on the list. I'm sorry if I did. Luke chapter 5. And uh, just so you understand, most of the, if there's an error in the back, it's uh, preacher fault. And so let's look at Luke chapter 5, verse number 5. And um, this is where, there it is, they found it. Wow. It's like magic. And Simon answering said, maybe it wasn't my fault. Maybe it was. I don't know. Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Remember, they've been fishing. They've not been catching anything. Look at verse 6, please, if we can keep going. I'm asking for too much. I got five. Let's go to six. All right. Back to your Bibles. Verse number six. All right. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Verse seven. Here it is. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. Notice that phrase. They beckoned unto their partners that they should come and, what's the next word? Help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. This is a great work, the ministry of Bible Baptist Church. We can't do it by ourselves. We need help. And so they beckoned unto their partners, come and help us. Remember, uh, when Andrew found the Lord, it says, he first findeth his own brother. He went to his brother Simon Peter and he found him and said, we have found the Christ. Amen. He first found his own brother. We can invite people uh, to church. We can invite people to get involved. We can invite people to know Christ. As we said, how shall they hear without a preacher? We can invite. I, I could go on, but our time is done. Solomon gets right to the point. He gets right to the point. He, he makes it short and sweet. He said, you know what? And you read his book. You read, this, you read Ecclesiastes. You read Proverbs. And he talks about all his vanity and vexation of spirit. And he said there, he's lived this long life and he's seen it all. He's done it all. Uh, he's experienced everything that life had to offer him. He's known great wealth and power. He, he said it's all vanity and vexation of spirit. And all this wealth, all this wealth, all these riches of the world and things that the world has to offer. And he, he said it, it doesn't mean anything. And he gets down to the bottom line. The bottom line. You ever get an a estimate on something? We get all kinds of estimates. We got estimates on these sidewalks and estimates on the parking lot and estimates on the fencing and estimates on our car that was recently repaired. You know, but you know what I do? Now I'll read all that, but I don't read all that first. You know what I do? Bobby, you know exactly what I do because I'm cheap. I go to the bottom line. And so I, I want to know on the bottom line what those 10 pages of text are about to cost me. Y'all do too. Put your halo off to the side for a second. Malachi's tighter than the bark on a tree. Amen? See, so look at the bottom line. What's the bottom line? What's the final total. And that's really what Solomon's doing here. Oh, you need to read all the fine print. You need to read all the details. You need to read every line, every page. But guess what? Here's, this, here's the, the whole crux of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty of man. You know, church, sometimes serving God people whine about it. People complain about it. People, well, how you doing? Well, under the circumstances. No, don't be under the circumstances. Fear God and keep His commandments. Well, the world is a, is a hard place. 
Yes, it's a hard place, and they were casting Christians to lions one day. But fear God and keep His commandments. Well, people aren't going to church like they used to, preacher. Fear God and keep His commandments. Well, the government's getting hostile towards the church, and Christians are falling out of favor in the secular society. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. The Word never changes, the mission never changes, God never changes, and our duty never changes. Fear God and keep His commandments. We may not all be missionaries, we may not all be pastors or evangelists or teachers, but there is something that every child of God can do. There's something that every one of us can do, and it's easier than we think. Let's rejoice that I can do All things, say it with me, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Let's fear God and keep his commandments. Would you bow in prayer with me, please? Our heads are bowed and eyes closed. And today, uh, again, not an evangelistic message, but if you're here tonight and you do not know Christ as your Savior, we want to invite you to the altar this evening to pray with someone here. Men and ladies are available to pray with you and to share with you from the Bible how you can come to know Christ as your Savior, how you can make Him your Lord and Savior. And then, Christian, I just want to encourage you. I hope that something that was said tonight and it was more of a teaching message than a preaching message, but something that may have been said tonight may have encouraged you, may have helped you, may have convicted you about your service to the Lord and your walk with Him. And so tonight I just want to take a few moments of invitation, a few verses of song and give us a chance to pray here at this altar. Maybe someone's on your heart tonight that you need to pray for. As I said, they can't resist your prayers. They can't resist you going to the throne room of God on their behalf. And so maybe someone's on your heart tonight to pray for. Maybe you need to step it up in the area of serving the Lord and elevating your service to the Lord and being an example, being an educator, telling others, inviting others, investing in the work of God, whatever it might be. Tonight, let's just take this time as a church family. And again, to thank the Lord for our moms and and, uh, the legacy of our moms in our lives, just to honor them. Whatever the Lord puts on your heart, you come. Father, bless the invitation. Have your way and your will. Uh, Lord, may may that be our sole focus, to fear God and keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Help us to be diligent about the duty and the commands that you have called us to. Give us that grace to serve you and love you and to walk with you even more and better than we have. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Stand and join us, please. Brother Jody leads a song or two of invitation. Just Others have come. So we invite you to come tonight to pray. I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed. Just as I am poor, rich in mind, sight rich is he.
Thank you. And all God's people said amen. Amen. It's good again. Thank you so much for being with us.